G. Tanji, you are watching Kababayan Today, and we are doing a live call-in show. Uh, if you have questions on immigration, we have our attorneys here, very knowledgeable, Attorney Allison Aquino Silva and Attorney Richard Lowe. We are taking your calls. At unang-una, kasama natin si Malu from L.A. Malu, are you there? Yes. Hi, Malu. Ano po yung tanong ninyo? Ang father ko ay U.S. citizen, pero patay na siya. Ang mami ko kasama ko sa bahay ngayon. Ang gusto kong malaman, po, paano ko, mala paano ko uh, malalaman kung kasama ako doon sa penetration niya nung, nung unang-una siyang uh, nag-apply ng citizenship niya. Kasi ang uncle ko ang nag-petition sa kanila. Nung nagpasa siya ng application, hindi ko alam kung kasama kami, wala kami kopya. Paano ko malalaman? Okay, so how will she be able to find out if she is part of the petition? Um, well, first of all, in order to find out, to answer her question directly, you can conduct what's called a FOIA, or a Freedom of Information Act request with the Immigration Service. And it's essentially a request, a formal request submitted to either the Department of State, USCIS, um, or uh, potentially the U.S. Embassy in order to get a copy of the file in the application that is with the uh, relevant government agency. So that's how she can obtain a copy of the application and see whether she was um, listed on the application or not. Um, but with that said, you don't necessarily need to get the application because um, being a dependent on a petition is automatic if you're a child. So if, if you are under the age of 21, unmarried, then potentially you um, are a derivative on the application. But whether you're listed on the application or not, that's not necessarily um, required because just being a relative makes you a dependent on an application. Okay. Is there a fee associated to having to request for that information? Uh, on a FOIA, there generally isn't a fee unless the size of the file becomes too large and the government then can charge you a, a, mo a nominal fee. But most of the FOIAs that we do, we don't get charged the fee. It's a, it's a way for the government to be transparent and give the files the open records, basically. Okay, well, we have another phone call on the line with us. Kasama natin si John from L.A. John, are you there? Yes, yes. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon to our attorney. Um, I have a question. Yes, what is your um, question? I am a caregiver. Uh, I work as an uh, in individual for a, a male caregiver. I work here, I live in, and 24-7, uh, seven days a week. Um, I don't have, they don't give me a lot of uh, uh, days off for a month. I only have three and a half days. And I just heard about the trafficking or stuff like that uh, I don't know if I consider myself as a, I can't complain because uh, they know that I don't have a papers anymore I I overdo I mean I overstay here and I don't know if I if any I have any option or you know because um, to think that uh, I'm working for seven days a week 24 7 and I don't know if I have a any option to that. Cause. Okay. John, I'm not an attorney, but it sounds like um, you're being taken advantage of. And remember, here in America, there are laws that protect everyone, even if you don't have papers. Am I right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the whole reason why the T visa is available. Mm -hmm. um, because just like John in the situation, you're out of status. And that's precisely why companies and employers are able to take advantage of individuals and able to essentially um, enslave them and have those type of working conditions. With regards to John's particular situation, it sounds like he might qualify for the T visa, so he certainly should go ahead and consult with, you know, with other, either us or any other attorney in order to determine if he meets the other requirements for the T visa. Um, but certainly excessive working conditions like what he is describing is the first, um, is, is one of the requirements that we need to take a look at and he may very well qualify for the T visa and the T visa, you know, like we were discussing, that would give him a temporary legal status here in the United States so he doesn't have to live in fear and eventually after three years he becomes eligible for a green card. Okay, wonderful. Kasama natin si Rolando, Rolando from uh, Rancho Cucumanga when we return here on our show.